Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about Stargirl Season 1, Episode 7 and 8, Shree, Part 1 and 2. So they decided to give her a two-parter episode. I personally think the first part is a whole lot better story-wise and like directed and action and stuff. The second part is more like humorous, comedic, but the ending is great, which is why I'm talking about it. This is one of those things I said in one of my much, much older reviews. I did not see this coming when it got to the end of episode eight. <laughs> now, episode seven is directed by the legendary Leah Thompson, and she's best known What's it, Thompson? Oh, whatever. Anyway, it's, she's better known for playing the mom in Back to the Future, um, and Howard the Duck, Caroline in the City, and so she's a big, well-known actress who's now starting to direct, and she's been directing a lot of stuff on TV, especially Star Trek episodes. She directed an episode of Star Trek Picard season two, which she also like cameoed in and stuff like that. So I was very impressed by her directing in this episode. I was just shocked and amazed, especially the action scene. Like, I didn't think she had that in her. <laughs> now, when it comes to directing, not everybody directs everything. In movies, it's always a first unit director and a second unit. So and sometimes that's how it is in TV too. So I'm not sure if she directed the action scene or not, but who cares? It was just awesome. So. And this is mostly just a Cindy episode. We get to know a little bit more about her. Cindy is a very complex character. She's the school bully. She's the queen bee. Everybody hates her and everything. And she's just downright evil and mean. But her father is part of the ISA. I forget her father's name, but he's some type of like dragon scaly looking dude who wears like a hood over his like face and stuff and all you can see is his reptilian type eyes ah, i forgot his name i should look it up if i um, did this anyway so her father is very mysterious and she you know it's interesting her and courtney are very similar they're both stubborn they both disobey their father they both like you know one's a superhero one's about to become a supervillain and it's just like, you know, and they're both teen girls. So, you know, they have so much in common, but yet they're so different because one's evil and one's good. And so in this episode, we see she has a huge falling out with her best friend, basically her only friend. And in the first season, you know, when it comes to her best friend, I forget her name, but we barely don't know much about her. She's just like, you know, Sydney's little minion. But she had more screen time, even though it was brief in season one than that of season two. In season two, we get introduced to her brother, who is now the owner of the Thunderbolt genie thing. And so, like, with her brother, she's really mean to him. And I actually forgot who she was when I saw her in season two because she was barely in it. But after this falling out with Cindy, basically, they never start being friends, like, again. And so... I remember, like, I remember in the Halloween episode, the Dr. Midnight and Our Man episode, they both wore the same thing for Halloween. And she's like, she's like, I thought it would be cute. We dressed the same. And she's like, nope, go change. And she made her literally change. Now, Cindy comes from a very wealthy family, a huge mansion. And she has a stepmom. In fact, this is her second stepmom. Her original mom died. And it's revealed in this episode that it was um, it was Cindy, the one who killed her, but it was by mistake. And then we, I think we see in season two how she kills her and stuff, or at least how she kills one of her stepmoms, because she has two stepmoms. From what Beth says, that Cindy used to be nice in elementary, then her biological mom died. She got two stepmoms, and then she just became evil and everything. And the thing about Cindy is that she wants to be a supervillain. She wants to be part of the ISA badly. Her father says she's not ready yet because her training isn't complete. 
he tells her she's his greatest creation that he engineered because she is biological, but he ran tons of experiments on her to make her what she is and stuff. And so she feels as though like she deserves more. And she t constantly spies on the ISA because she wants to know more about them. She learns about Stargirl and how they want the, um, Stargirl taken out. So her task is to watch over Henry. Her dad needs Henry and his brainwave type abilities to work his machine. Cindy no longer wants to be affiliated with Henry because she used to date Henry. He dumped her for Yolanda. She's been pissed ever since then. That's why she did what she did to Yolanda with the new photos and stuff. And so she can't really stand Henry all that much because he's a little sappy. But, you know, there's like a dance coming up and she wants to go to it. She wants him to invite her. He doesn't want to. He just wants to mope around a hospital. So this irritates her to the point where she just doesn't want to go. And I think that's what the falling out with her best friend happened because her best friend got invited and she got furious. We see how lonely and sad Cindy is because she basically tells like her father she's lonely up there in the world. She just has a stepmom who she doesn't like and she bosses around. Her stepmom is terrified of Cindy. Basically, if the stepmoms don't do what Cindy wants, the dad will dispose of them. Which is what happened to the first stepmom. And at school, everybody fears her and she runs to school, but she has no friends at the school. She just has like basically a suck up and her suck up pretty much stood up to her. And now she's like mad, pissed, angry. She can't stand Yolanda because of the whole Henry thing. She doesn't like Courtney because Courtney stands up to her. She doesn't like Beth because Beth's a nerd. And she doesn't like Rick because Rick is Rick. <laughs> And so, when it comes to Cindy and Courtney, they are in like science class and they have to be partners, which Cindy does not want to. But Courtney basically tells her that we're the only two left and we don't have partners, and that's be them. This is when the bonding moment starts. She does boss Cindy, um, Courtney around, but you know, she's actually talking to her and she reveals that you know she knows a lot about chemistry because of her dad and like you know and how everybody's lame and it's not but they actually have like a really natural bonding moment that doesn't feel forced at all it's just cindy you know somewhat venting and talking because she has nobody to talk to because she is literally lonely and that's what happens when you become such a like bratty person nobody really wants to be around you and so then they like exchange numbers or somehow Cindy already knows her number. And since both of them don't have dates, they're just going to hang out that night at like their house and just like chill and everything. And so when it comes to Courtney, she is, well, her and the JSA are training with Pat. And when Pat's trying to explain who all these villains are, because now he set up like these little fake dummy things for them to all fight. And he's explaining each and every one of them and their powers. Courtney is being a little miss cocky and basically like, yeah, we know they can do this. We fought them just last week and everything and blah, blah, blah. But they get their butts kicked last week. And so like... Every time he's trying to explain, she interrupts him. And it's getting to the point where he's getting irritated and the rest of the team are just kind of like, what is she doing? Then all of a sudden, she tries to show off. I like the way she showed off. It was great um, moves with her stick. She's flipping around. She's spinning around. She's knocking like, you know, the dummies over and blasting them and everything. And she's all excited what she can do. But then everybody just looks at her kind of like, you're a brat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's upset that like she keeps interrupting him. The other team members are pissed because they're all like, you could have saved one of those dummies for like me, you know? And so like they're just like really they just irritate about how she's showboating and stuff. Well, at one point in time, there's like a football game. And so her and her stepbrother are kind of getting at it because her stepbrother is jealous. He doesn't like all the attention that Pat is giving Courtney because he no longer gives it to him. So now he's forced to hang out with Courtney's mom. Courtney's mom is 
working for Jordan, who is Icicle. They changed Icicle's senior name. It's not Jordan whatsoever. And so he's taken a liking to that of Courtney's mom. They have like a work dinner date type thing and they just chatting it up. Now he knows she's married, but he don't care. And so when they're at the football game and stuff, I'm trying to think something happens. Um, oh yeah. Courtney is very adamant that the, pr the principal is the new fiddler. Pat is all like the fiddler is a white Irish dude with red hair and blah, 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 blah. And she's all like, yeah, well, we just saw like the principal do this and do that. Not sure where the original fiddler is, but she is the new fiddler. And so the ISA, their whole thing is that they want to make America better so nobody can get sick. Cause that's what Icicle wants. It's weird. He's a villain and he kills people, but he has a noble cause. He wants to rid the world of toxins and, you know, chemicals that can kill people like he did his wife and gave her cancer. And like he said last time, he's been tracking down everybody who worked for that company and killed them. And that's exactly what he's been doing. And there's a scene where he shows up in the hotel and he meets the person that ran that company. And so like Courtney, when she sees the um, principal lady, she sees that she gets up and leave and Courtney's being Courtney. So she goes and follow her. She goes to her locker and she changes. So she sees the principal open up a panel. Oh well, no, no, wait. She sees the principal go in her office. She goes in the office and the principal ain't there. It's a secret panel in the wall. So her staff helps her to find it. Now, she's doing this all along, which is very stupid. She needs her team because she don't know what she's going to find. And so Cindy, oh wait, I forgot. So before she did all that, Courtney was talking to Cameron, who is Icicle's son. And so like, he invited Courtney to the dance. She tells Sydney that Sydney is pissed and no longer wants anything to do with Courtney. Uh, and so Sydney leaves the football game because she's a cheerleader and she goes home and she's pissed and she's furious and she wants to talk to her dad. Her dad neglects her a lot, which really infuriates her. And so she goes down in his little dungeon type thing and she sees on the monitors a girl dressed as in a star pattern. So she knows that star girl. Somehow, in the nick of time, she's able to meet up with Courtney. See, Courtney went through the tunnels, through the principal's office, through the tunnels, and then ended up in, like, near the locker room. She doesn't understand how, because it's a series of tunnels. Well, the tunnels lead from the school to, like, Sydney's mansion, and then down to the headquarters of the ISA. So it's like all these places. I don't know how she got there so fast. So basically, boom, it's a huge battle between Sydney and that of Stargirl. And they are just throwing down. Cindy is an extremely good fighter. Now she's wearing the outfit that her father made her for graduation day, which is like her Shreve costume. She's never called Shreve in the show, but you know, that's who she is in the comments. And when I say they are throwing down, boy, they are throwing down. To the point where Courtney's getting her butt whooped and she's just like, screw it, it's time to get blasted in the face. <laughs> and that's what she does. And then she's like, oh no, because she blasted her so hard in the face, her face is now singed and burnt. But the craziest thing happened. Cindy's skin regenerates like Wolverines, like really fast. When Cindy sees, the, oh, I mean, when Courtney sees that, she's like, oh no, because <laughs> she knows no matter what she does to her, she can regenerate and Cindy can fight. So she's getting her butt whooped now. <laughs> so the thing about Cindy is that she has these two like bone claws that come out from her wrist. Uh, well, one in each wrist. And so not only is she fighting with that, but she's fighting with her father's dragon fire staff. And the visuals are great when she makes fire go everywhere. And there's a scene in the battle that took me by surprise. I was not expecting the fight to look like this. So they're in the gym. They're sit. They're standing on like this little circle thing, 
Um, I guess that's on like a pattern on the floor, like a, a giant basketball or whatever. It's something, but a circle. The camera is constantly moving around the circle, you know, moving around the girls as they fight each other. I love that direction. Instead of seeing the camera being still in um, position in one angle, it's just moving around. And all the girls got to do is just fight. This is hard to do because as the camera is moving around, you got to remember all your moves and hit them perfectly. And so, of course, it's not the actual actresses, it's the stunt people. And they just doing an amazing job. So, you know, when they mess up, they have to do take after take after take. I appreciate this for a TV show. I appreciate that a lot. But then, of course, Cindy gets the upper hand on Courtney. And as she's about to kill her, all of a sudden, somebody comes in with a sword and chops off the staff. And... Oh, I forgot what. I think he knocks Cindy down or something like that. Something happens to Cindy when she gets, like, um, knocked out. Because Courtney's already knocked out. And Courtney's pretty bruised up and been stabbed, I think, in, like... She said stabbed somewhere. Not in the chest or stomach, but I think, like, in the arm or something like that. By Cindy Spikes. Now, this man is Sir Justin. Shiny Knight. He has been cameoing in the show um like in uh, a couple episodes ago and in this episode he's janitor with a thick beard something's wrong with him not sure what but something is but we know who he is because we saw the sword in his janitor office like i remember when i kept seeing this dude i'm like something's up with him but i didn't know what and i was surprised that it was shiny knight and so he rescued courtney and stuff well he leaves them both there and he leaves by this time, Pat went to go looking for Cindy because when he went back to um, the stadium, her brother said she had left. And so he, he went looking for her and the staff found Pat. And so it brought him to Courtney, who's now passed out. And so is like, you know, Cindy. As Pat's screaming her name out, Sydney wakes up and she takes the um, fire staff that's broken and she leaves on out of there. So she knows Courtney's name. But how she made the correlation just doesn't make no sense. He could have just been looking for Courtney. But of course, Courtney has long, blonde, curly hair. So it's not that hard to figure out who she is and stuff. And so this was like a huge, huge huge battle so then we get into the next episode and he already is taking courtney to the hospital but he needs to make an excuse as to why courtney is so banged up and one of the vigilante type like excuses that heroes use is just crash car into something so he crashes his car into a pole where he gets banged up too he calls like their mom and you know he tells them like you know um she's all right so that's how they're gonna get away with the whole her being banged up now this entire eighth episode is mostly just filler and mostly just comedic. So the rest of the JSA members, they want to know who Cindy is and how she's able to do what she is because they want to know who her father is and is he linked to the ISA. So they arrange a plan to spy on Cindy's house when she's not there. They send Beth in with the goggles so that they can talk to her stepmom and Beth can look around the house and get like a read on like, you know, who her father might be. Pat goes down in the basement and tells the staff, like, look, man, I know you don't like me and everything, but you chose my stepdaughter for whatever reason and you're putting her life in danger. If y'all are going to do this when she is in extreme danger, you take her away from it. And so... After that... Courtney, you know, pretty much goes home. She's banged up. She's not feeling well. She realizes she made a huge mistake going there by herself. So then he finds out where the other members are and he goes to Cindy's house and he tries to stop Beth, but he doesn't do it in time. The stepmom opens the door and they have to pretend to be daughter and father. And then the mother just like, how is this possible? Because one's black and one's white. <laughs> Anyways, 
the stepmom is very friendly and she likes Pat. He's pretending to be like a plumber helping out while Beth is like snooping around. Not only is Beth not able to find no pictures of Cindy's father, but they both her and Pat realize a lot of the stuff in the house is fake, like the bookshelf and stuff. And so while this is going on, Cindy decides to pay Courtney a visit and she's being very cavalier with chocolates and, and, and of course Courtney's freaked out because Courtney knows who Cindy is and she's worried that she might know who she is. And so at that time you kind of think Cindy doesn't know in their thing. And so, you know, as they're talking, they're just having a normal conversation and right as Cindy's about to leave, she's all like, she mentioned what happened the night before and she tells Courtney plain and simple you think I couldn't recognize you with that dumb mask on and all this other stuff she's all like I'm gonna kill every member of the JSA and then I'm gonna come back for you or come back for her family one of those two and she just leaves so Courtney is worried and she goes down to get the staff but the staff doesn't want to move and so she talks to the staff and it finally decides all right fine i'll help you out and she's just kind of like you know what's up with this staff <laughs> and everything because it has a mind of its own and it's kind of a sentient being almost and it took pat's words and didn't want to put her in the harm's danger but then they realizes Sin um, courtney needs the staff and stuff so beth ends up finding like a secret panel and she goes down in these tunnels and then her communication system is cut off from like the rest of the team so she's scared and worried and when she hears a, a growling type noise she's just like nope <laughs> and turns around and leaves but then she goes up into cindy's room to find like a picture of her father which she does and as she's getting a read on him it turns out he is a war criminal from china and killed tons of people with like a gas bomb and everything and so she takes the picture and but there's a problem cindy's coming back now and so yolanda puts on her costume and she climbs up the wall and she gets beth out by tossing her out the window and rick catches her with his super strength so then but see here's the thing cindy doesn't know pat is in the house because his head is underneath the sink and everything and so like later on that night or well, later on that day they discuss who like cindy's father is and this and that but later on that night this is what took me by surprise i was not expecting this so cindy's in her room at night and she's looking around her room and she's all like somebody's been in here and because she knows something's just like up with her room because something's kind of like missing but she don't know what so she goes over to her nightstand and then we see it in the mirror of the nightstand, we see the reflection of Stargirl surfing in on her staff. She busts through the window and then she like spears <coughs> Cindy into the glass mirror on the nightstand. That was intense. Now this episode, the eighth episode is not directed by Leah. It's directed by somebody else. But I was not expecting her to bust through the window and then spear her straight through a mirror. <laughs> That's when I, I remember when I first saw that like years ago. I just remember thinking to myself, no, this is like, this can't be a, a, a CW era of her show. I was not expecting that. You normally don't see stuff like that. It's always more fluff in CW shows and everything. This lets me know this was straight up a DC Universe show. <laughs> so they ball it out. They busting through the window. They outside. They're like throwing down on each other and everything. But of course, Cindy is like, you know, a better fighter than that of Courtney. And so they're fighting and, 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 and everything in the street. And it's just awesome, right? Now, one thing I didn't mention, Henry is starting to develop his telekinesis to where he gets headaches in school. He can hear people's voices. He's been using his powers to make objects move like a key. And one of the things he finds with his powers is that the key opens up a compartment where his dad's like suit is in and a bunch of files on people one of those files is cindy and her father um wrote a note talking about i need you to do me a favor i want um 
my daughter to watch your son. And I like how he phrased My daughter is very good at watching stuff. <laughs> so Henry knows something's up with Cindy and she's been using him. So he drives out to see her. As Cindy goes crashing down in the street, he almost hits her with a car by mistake. So then she sees him and she goes back to like beat up on Courtney some more. Well, it's at the point where she's trying to stab her but can't because the staff won't let her. And she's telepathically talking to that of Henry and talking about help me kill her and we're just the same and our fathers and this and that. So he's freaking out. His powers literally just like, like combust and explodes. And it's a huge um, telekinetic like um, blast that just like knocks both Cindy and Courtney like nearly 20 feet away from each other and stuff. And so at this time, Cindy falls down the street near a sewer. And I wasn't expecting this to happen. A bunch of men grabbed her. It's the minions of her father who dress in red cloaks. And they drag her down in the sewer in a very interesting day, head first down as her feet are dangling up in the air. And it's very well choreographed. So then he wakes up and Courtney, he can read her mind. And it's a great, like, it's a great, like, mind reading type thing. I wish they would do that more in, like, the X-Men stuff. And so he knows who Courtney is in this, and he just takes off running into the woods. And so Cindy's father is watching everything on, like, hidden camera and stuff. So he's happy because he's all like, my daughter was wrong. Like, he does possess telepathic abilities. This was a really good episode. Like, I'm telling you, man, season one was just great. Season two just got CW5 <laughs> and everything. Uh, with all those long-winded speeches and no action and all this other stuff. But, boy, season one was so good Ugh. and stuff. Happy Women's History Month, everybody. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.